Hello and welcome to Wrecked Podcast. I am Bunchy alongside my esteemed colleague and co-host, Chamber. Chamber, how you doing, buddy? Doing uh, pretty good, man. Uh, just chilling out here at home. Um, I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with me today. Uh, I feel like I just woke up. I feel like I have like 7 a.m. recording voice. Um, yeah, I'm hitting, the, uh, I'm hitting the wall today. I, like, I've been getting up early every day and now i just hit like a three o'clock i'm ready for bed wall <laughs> now that i think about it though i think i think i know what the culprit is um i had a i had a we, we were going to record earlier today but i had a interview uh for a oh. job um for so, <laughs> for what american idol now your listen, voice is shot or what no so <laughs> the job is pretty funny actually I, I like to apply to anything that's kind of in uh, in, in the account management field yeah that's so, essentially what i do as well yeah like when so, i'm looking for jobs anything that slightly matches my job description i'm in <laughs> right i don't care what the industry is necessarily as long right. as i'm managing accounts um so this one was for the swine industry so like swine, pig farming like pigs pig farming i think wow <laughs> so uh, i live in like a farm kind of belt um, it, uh, the area. old can- Canadian farm belt. It's true. It's right. It's right where I live. Uh, so a lot of you know a lot of good wine and stuff like that. But a ton of farming. Um, so, anyways, after I was, I don't know if I was a little worked up, but my wife's my wife's like, oh, you know, meet me in the laundry room, um, and I was like, all right, let's see where this goes. Uh, <laughs> but she had a she had a little doobie for me uh, <laughs> afterwards. So. Now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure my sore throat is just caused from uh, coughing up a lung uh, uh, an hour or two ago. Fantastic. That's probably what it is. <laughs> and I'm probably a little drowsy because of it as well. Fantastic. Uh, well, we're off and running. We've got swine belt. We've got uh, <laughs> bathroom doobies. We've got yeah. hashtags Laundry galore. Laundry room doobs. Laundry we've room got, doobs. We've got <laughs> hashtags galore. And we are only a minute in, people. Free podcast. Free podcast. So, uh, I mean, uh, let's start it off how I start it off every week. How are you feeling about what we're seeing in the market? You know what? I'm feeling... Uh, a little bit better. Um, there's been some some positive announcements in in kind of the in, in the crypto space. Um, some Twitter stuff, some you know some financial district stuff. Some I feel like Mexico stuff. I'm not 100 percent sure on that, but I thought there was some positive stuff coming out of Mexico. Um, you know, Jay Z you know got into NFTs earlier this week. I mean. Uh, we got some. We got some more celebs in the news later on today, or later on in the show. Um, so I don't know. It's it seems to be, uh, you know, getting more positive. Bitcoin. I mean, if you want to run down the price action, we can talk about kind of yeah, what's so happening price wise. Well, it's funny. We were just doing this Friday. Everything mm-hmm. was down ten percent plus, and we're back a little early this week but right now everything is up up only we are we're looking at so 7.6 percent seven day trend for bitcoin around right around 35k Mm -hmm. eth big bounce back up 20.7 percent and rocketing today too like today's a nice day for eth yeah Uh, especially versus 264 dollars huge because we are i feel like we were like 1800 bucks last week Dude, we were down in like the 17s at some point. Really? I yeah. 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 I, I so, thought I was poor again. I mean, I am poor, but like poorer. I, I, internet poor. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. 
internet poor. Uh, hashtag internet poor. Binance uh, up 14%, around 300 bucks. Cardano up 21%. Doge up 33%. Uh, XRP up 24%. Polkadot up 10%. Uh, that's the top 10. Uniswap up 13. Litecoin up 20. Uh, our boys at Solana up Kevin's 30%. happy. Kevin. <laughs> wait so hold on let's get an update we are uh, last week we last week's show was uh, well uh, we left that show last week thinking oh my god this is sh- episode what is a, trash what a garbage fire that was that's what we thought it yeah, was. That was and that was the sentiment. feedback the feedback on that show was probably one of the better shows we've had in in quite some time From the feedback alone I'm putting it in a top five episode all time. Oh wow! Like, like it was. We've never received feedback like that from an episode, so I was I was happy afterwards. But you're right. I, I we were we were thinking tire fire. So um, now, did you actually see uh, like the numbers? Yes, the numbers were. Um, no, no. I would. Sorry, that is not what I meant. Oh, okay. Did you actually see Kevin? Oh no, I haven't seen. I'm going to see Kevin. I'll be seeing That's Kevin this week. This weekend, yeah. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Nah, I can't wait for next week's show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, we'll have we'll, I'll have some content for next week. But um just kind of like a little update there. The day after the show was my sister's birthday. And <laughs> you're and I such ca- a savage. I called her at <laughs> eight in the morning to wish her a happy birthday. <laughs> what was her up. response? She didn't pick up. <laughs> Hey, you know, maybe she was sleeping. Maybe she had her, yeah. Look, who calls somebody at 8 a.m.? Like an asshole. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) But I texted her, um, happy birthday, and then I FaceTimed with the kids later on that day. So, whatever. Oh, so it's all back to normal. I mean, it is what it is. (laughs) (laughs) I'll have better better information after this weekend. It'll be... It'll be, you know, we'll be drunk. Like it's co- like in Canada, you guys are kind of in the U.S. You guys are ahead of us socially right now. Uh, this will be the first, like in Canada, especially Ontario. This is going to be like the first weekend where we can kind of like get into it, get ripped, you know, light off some fireworks. Like it's going to be, it's going to be a big weekend. There's going to be, uh, there'll be some murders happening. I think <laughs> overall, not necessarily at my party, but I think like. This weekend in Canada will be nuts. Uh, so it's it's a lot of hashtag we, murder parties going. Yeah, down. a lot of murder parties. What and the I mean, hell I, do you guys do at a party up there? I find, and this is just my theory, um, but I think I think this applies worldwide because we were quarantined for so long. Once people start, and I think you know, I, I don't know if we're seeing this in the U.S. because uh, you guys definitely opened up uh, a, a lot quicker than we have. Uh, but because everybody's been cooped up for so long, I feel once everybody goes back into the into the wild, uh, that there's going to be a lot of altercations, a lot of like anger built up. You know what I mean? Like I feel like it's going to be a little ornery out there. Um, and and Hor- can- horny. Yeah, hor- no, horny. No, ornery. Like angry. Oh, you know what oh, I mean? Like oh. <laughs> also horny. <laughs> Also, horny. I think I think there's a better chance for that than murder. There's a good chance. Well, I mean, if you've been if you've been cooped up with a significant other, it's uh, like this COVID whole time. boom part two. Yeah, yeah this exactly. is like rise. This is going to be like rise of Tinder in the swine belt. <laughs> like Tinder, Tinder in the swine belt is going to be <laughs> popping off. Holy shit! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Tinder in the swine belt will be popping off. So. I think uh, by the way, buy my weekend. new album, Tinder and the Swine Belt, uh, available in stores near you. Amazing. <laughs> so I think I think it'll be crazy. Plus, it's like a, like a heat wave here. Everybody's going to be outside. Uh, you'll be at the beach. Oh, it's you guys be- are getting heat wave too? It is oh, yeah, yeah. so hot here. Do you know, so not in my neck of the woods, in British Columbia, which is on like the west coast of Canada, uh, it neighbors Washington State, If uh, for those geography nerds out there. Um but we're losing, like, we lost, like, a hundred people in, like, two days due to, like, heat, uh, like, heat stroke or something. Like, I don't know. It's crazy. Like, there's been over a hundred deaths in the last two days. Because what is of the heat. happening up there? 
It's crazy. I'm telling you, man. Like Dead Man Canadian, Summer. Canadian murder. Dead Man I don't know Summer. If <laughs> yeah. Canadian I don't know if murder parties, them. Tinder in the swine belt, and then you just die of heat? Yeah, just straight up die. I mean, it's hot, though. I think it was uh, in... In uh, Fahrenheit, it's a, it's I think a, it was like it's 44. It's a scorching, scorching 78 degrees in the Great White North and everybody's <laughs> passing out. So one sec, one sec. I'll pull it out for you. I think it was like 44, 46 degrees Celsius. I think so 46 Celsius to Fahrenheit is a hundred and like almost 115. Like Get it's out of here. Hot, man. Get out of here. It was a record yesterday. In, it is currently 95 degrees at where I am. Or, I don't know where I am. Let's see. How, uh, it's warm here. Uh, uh, it's probably the same. You said 95? Yeah. Uh, temp Fahrenheit? Yeah. Never know. Welcome to Chamber Does... Uh, chamber I, I does degrees. Yeah, it's twenty eight degrees Celsius. Um, let's see what that means. Welcome to Come Chamber on. Does Degrees, a new uh, <laughs> new segment here on Rex Podcasts. You said it's ninety five. It's only eighty three here. Oh, uh, see, I'm telling you, it's not as hot as you think it is. <laughs> There's yeah, no way it was forty four. <laughs> no, no, uh, no. What I'm saying is, we had a record in British Columbia, forty six degrees Celsius. Wow. With the with the humidity, uh, which is 114. Well, you know so what? That, Those that's people deserve bonkers. to die. Then. <laughs> <laughs> dark from bunch. It's getting dark from bunch. <laughs> I'm, in, I'm in one of those moods today. Uh, all right, so uh, let's go back to to crypto here. Right. We've got Bitcoin dominance at 44.1 percent. Uh, we've got a new update. We have passed the. 8,000 coins mark. We are at 8,292 coins. Wow. Uh, and a total market cap of 1.48 trillion. That's pretty good. Thoughts? I, I think, I don't think we're done yet. Like, it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel like it did in 2018. Yeah, you know no, I, mean? I don't think so either. Like, I, I don't know. I've seen like, a I lot of people calling for the bear market in these last couple days, but like, what if this is the bear market? Like, is this the bear market? Yeah, is this as bad as it's going to get? That's what I mean. Is yeah, it? Yeah, maybe. I mean, I don't know. It just doesn't have that same feel. I might be wrong. We might be singing a different song next week or like a month from now. Well, literally but, every other week, it's yeah, we're saying it's something. something different. But I, I feel like our tune hasn't changed on where we think we are. Yeah, like I'm just looking at... It just looks like we're at a good amount of support here. You know, we're balancing between... I have resistance levels at about 33.2 and about 36.8. Uh, and we've just been kind of bouncing between that uh, for the last couple of days. Um, and that seems to be where the most, the majority of the action has been happening. I was talking uh, to a buddy that I had over this weekend. Uh, mm-hmm. One of my high school friends, haven't seen him in a while. And all the families came over and... Uh, he is like a trader. He's at like a desk or something in New York City, and he oh, like a real trader. Yeah, like a real one, and not like uh, how I tell my parents I'm a trader. No, 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 definitely not <laughs> like that. Like a legit one. And so he was asking me what I thought about Bitcoin, and I said, you know, well, like, you know, do you have any? Blah blah blah. And he was like, no. He's like, but my target is 12k. It's a good target thoughts on that i mean it's funny we did the math on our we did the math live and Mm -hmm. we came up with 13 yeah it's a good target so we're pros i'm more or less (laughs) Uh, but i mean like is there still a chance we get to there of course there's a chance of course i mean you could i mean you could go to zero technically um but i think 12k is like the old 3k you know what I mean? Yeah. Right. So that's like the doom and gloom scenario. That's like dump back up the truck. We're going all in at 12k. If you have any, uh, and somehow know. I'll be completely illiquid at that time and not <laughs> yeah, able like, to do anything. Yeah, we all will be. My network, uh, my net worth will be in apes, and I will, <laughs> I won't be able to buy anything. All right. Well, I mean, look, I think we're in a pretty good shape here for how we were yesterday. By the way. Shiba Inu 
you know, that <laughs> coin. I'm, I'm aware. Yeah. It is the 26th ranked crypto. 26. That's crazy. <laughs> above the likes if... of I love the above the likes of Bitcoin SV. <laughs> oh really? Well good. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> uh, but anyway, shall we? Yeah, let's do this. Let's get to the news. <laughs> All right, what do you got for us here? Let's see. I mean, I like to start off with a little bit of two things that I'm enjoying right now. Um, and that's something, one thing I enjoy all the time, which is Twitter. Uh, I, I feel like I've dialed back the TikTok. Uh, I'm more on Twitter again, uh, my, my true love. Uh, but Twitter has been getting on, obviously we've been talking NFTs a lot lately, but Twitter, I don't know if you've seen this, has finally got on the NFT train. Uh, so Twitter, this is the headline here. Twitter is giving out not surprising a, to me at all. A hundred and forty Ethereum NFTs uh, that you can that you can see on Rarible. Um, social media platform Twitter is giving out one hundred and forty NFTs. And for the record, one hundred and forty NFTs is not a not a ton. Uh, also, for the record, one of them just sold today for twenty five Ethereum. Wow. So so yeah. That, that was given right. away? I believe it was given away, yeah. I mean, I didn't look into it, but I know 100% that it sold for 25 Ethereum. So it, it could have been an auction. It could have been, you know what I mean? I, I don't know how I don't know how uh, it was it was sold, but the transaction was for 25 Ethereum. Uh, yeah, crazy. So social media platform Twitter is giving out 140 NFTs today, featuring seven different designs. The NFTs can be seen on popular NFT marketplace Rarible. Uh, NFTs or non fungible tokens. I didn't know that's what that meant. Shut <laughs> up. I'm just. I'm just. <laughs> God. Uh, I like. I, like the fact that I could even possibly. You believe, believe you, there was the, a slight belief there. There you was, I, dude. I well, I did believe you. Uh, it's man. on brand. It would be well, on brand if anything. Yeah, that's why. I mean, yep. well done. But thank you. Uh, thank I you. still would believe you. <laughs> Uh, are blockchain-based tokens that represent anything from audio to video files. I'll tell you what, I didn't know it could be audio files. That that I did not know. Because uh, NFT audio would be interesting. Um, yeah, game changer, I, I, bro. Uh, in, in this case, the NFTs are all, short for, uh, are all short GIFs related to the Twitter in various ways, including playful animation and, char and characters interacting with some aspect of the platform's brand. Uh, one NFT is called Furry. Twitter. That's the one by the oh, way. That's, that's a whole, that's a that's a avenue of Twitter I don't go down. Furry. That's Twitter. that's the one that sold for twenty five ETH. By the way, it was to definitely a fellow furry. Probably that's it, it's probably a furry. Maybe we'll be doing live shows at furry conventions coming up soon. <laughs> and all, and all it is is a furry three dimensional version of the Twitter logo. Another is called Reply Guy, representing someone who's always <laughs> <laughs> someone who is, who always comes up with the same reply. Uh, one called Firstborn features Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey's first ever tweet. Um, so the, this is the type of thing that's on there. Uh, Twitter is handing out NFTs directly to people who reply to its main tweet announcing the giveaway. It, is, it has already handed out a few of them. Uh, even though the NFTs are not for sale, Rarible appears to show some bids ranging from uh, 0.12 ETH uh, up to 1 ETH. So, Didn't you just say one sold for twenty? One just sold for twenty-five. So that's at the wow. time of this article, which was uh, earlier today, which was at eleven. Yeah. They, so did you see that they like changed their head or their banner on their they official? Did. Yeah. Uh, on their official <laughs> Twitter uh, page. Did you hear? Did you hear they that? They featured. Uh, they featured a digital art chick, which is going to yeah. piss some people off. I'm I heard sure. they took. They removed her after a while, though. They did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I heard it. I heard it on uh, much like the, uh, much like my Twitter feed. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. Uh, uh, but all right, well, I, I, that's interesting. I'm I'm down with some Twitter NFTs. I, I, you know, am I going to go out and hope to no. get a Twitter NFT? No, but I think it's good for. If there's only 140 of them, awareness. they could be worth a lot. 
Yeah, well, like, somebody's buying Jack's tweets for fifty million dollars. Like, you know, someone's gonna go buy these. Uh, but it's awesome for awareness. I mean, just NFTs and crypto in general. Good, good awareness yeah, uh, builder here. Uh, all right, I've got one in the topic of government slash regulation. Uh, mm-hmm. The Senator Cynthia Loomis touts Bitcoin as a retirement strategy. Interesting. I'm into this. I'm Senator, into this. This is my retirement strategy. Yeah, so. I'm exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> Senator Cynthia Loomis wants Americans to consider cryptocurrency as a way to diversify their retirement and long term savings. So she said this on CNBC. Uh, The so-called Bitcoin-friendly U.S. senator said she holds about 5 BTC, purchasing when the first was at $330. This person rocks. She got 5 Bitcoin. That's good for her. That's great. That she paid $1,500 for. And now is worth over uh, over $100,000. Your math is on point today. Just so good. (laughs) Degree math, just Bitcoin Degre- conversion, math. all sorts of stuff. I got it all for you. You want me to do some pie? I got that for you. Here's a quote from her, which I think is interesting. I worry about having all of our retirement monies denominated in U.S. dollars. As part of diversification, having a very diverse asset allocation, you don't have to have all your eggs in one basket. She said. I think one of the strongest stores of value for the long run is Bitcoin. Interesting. That's crazy. Yeah. That's really that's that's I, I don't know. I think that's a that's a good thing. Now, I would have to imagine that we were just talking about how, you know, this is our retirement plan, but I have to imagine the majority of people in crypto currently, it's probably their retirement plan. Um, yeah, we're all degenerates though. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Part. I don't know how long I, I don't know how many of us are going to get to that point where we can retire on it. Um I I know I mentioned this before, but you know, it might be a good idea, and this is not financial advice, but I guess technically it's just what I'm doing. Uh, but to, you, you should be thinking long term. Um, you know, this is something that it, it could, I mean, it could disappear tomorrow. It probably won't, but it could. Uh, so if you're up in a significant way, it, it's a, probably a good idea. And what I've done is I, I, you know, I had an honest conversation with myself and said, I have to get some of this out of you know the ecosystem and into more traditional markets to to preserve some of that um, and and to kind of that goal of of getting to retirement level um, you know it's not going to happen tomorrow but if you can if you can preserve <laughs> some of that, yeah I guess <laughs> but man I mean there's going to be a lot of tough guys talking right now uh, that in five years might be you know broke as shit. And you know some of some other. And you'll people, be less broke as shit. I'll be less broke as shit uh, with some money set aside for retirement, but not a you know not a bad idea to diversify into more traditional markets to preserve some of that capital, uh, especially if you're up significantly. Um, I've had that conversation with a couple of people, and you know a lot of people are worried about tax implication and and, and pay your tax just pay, whatever it is. It's going to be worth it um, because. You know, you you could, like I said, man, it could go to zero and you could be internet rich today and internet poor tomorrow, but I'd like to be real world rich, you know? Yeah, I know. I hear you. I'm, I'm with you. Uh, as soon as I have something worth pulling out, maybe I'll do the same thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, but Cynthia Loomis rocks. So she's talking about, uh, it, she says it's the only crypto she holds here, but uh, that doesn't mean that Ethereum doesn't have its benefits, she says. So, interesting. Uh, she's talking about, you know, regulation and all of that good stuff. We don't want to overly regulate or differently regulate traditional banking and non-fiat currency banking because we want them to have a level playing field, she said. That's nice. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think that's the way it should be seen, too, like, why would you do this any differently than a traditional financial market? You know what I mean? Yeah. So no, I think that I I don't think she's think I don't think she's saying anything too crazy. Um, no, is, I, this actually seems pretty level headed for the yeah. most part. <laughs> you know, like you, it's not a wild crypto take. Yeah, it's I think more it's of a, a diversify something out of 
you know, it's kind of the opposite of what you just said, right? She's probably got most of her net worth right, in exactly. USD, and she's like, let's get a little freaky on the side. And, exactly. And you're thinking the opposite. You're like, I've been I've been a freak for so long. I've, been on, I've mean. been on furry Twitter for too long, and... <laughs> And uh, I need uh, I need to get back into some missionary. You know what I'm saying? That's some, some missionary <laughs> some markets. I, some eye contact missionary. <laughs> Mar- those are the best markets to be in. <laughs> like like what it what like bonds? That's that's yeah, probably <laughs> Roth IRAs. I don't even know what that is, but it just, <laughs> just sounds good. <laughs> You're gonna make so much sweet missionary market to your Roth IRA. <laughs> You're a missionary market maker now. That's amazing. (laughs) (laughs) All right. What else you got? I got one. Um, This is from a couple of days ago uh, when the market wasn't as positive as it was today. Uh, Crypto exchange Huobi is no longer allowing users in China to trade derivatives according to its update, uh, its updated user agreement. So some China FUD, which is nice to hear. I like a good China FUD article once in a while. Um, it's uh, it's maybe the best FUD. Uh, the exchange has updated its user agreement, adding China to the list of prohibited jurisdictions uh, for using its derivatives trading uh, services. So again, not necessarily crypto, buying and trading crypto, but more the derivatives. Uh, Chinese users will still be able to access the exchange and use it for spot trading. So, not not too bad. But you know, when people see this, this is definitely a China FUD, um, you know, tagline. Uh, this comes just a few days after he will be reduced the amount of leverage available to users in China. This was reduced from a hundred. <laughs> wow, a hundred and twenty-five x. <laughs> that's crazy. Wait, that's how much leverage they could use? It was at that. Wow. And now it's it. Then it went down to five. Um, <laughs> a little more reasonable. Uh, <laughs> wow. Uh, reportedly due to regulatory concerns. Yeah, no shit. Uh, it's also prevented new users in China from accessing derivatives. As the block has reported, China has been cracking down on cryptocurrencies in general over the past few months. In particular, it is uh, focused on Bitcoin miners in the country, forcing many of them to shut down or move elsewhere. Since the start of the crackdown, Bitcoin's hash rate has dropped nearly 50%, uh, with many mining pools catering to Chinese clients, seeing large drops in hash rate. So, uh, you know, it's a, it's that the, you know, it's an article based on China FUD, but I don't think the FUD is too bad. Uh, just, you know, reducing the amount of leverage and basically prohibiting derivatives uh, for Chinese users. So everything else stays the same. Interesting. Not not too big of a deal, I don't think. Nah! Yeah. No, but but I, I guarantee you when that comes, you know, when that came out, it affected the market significantly. Oh, sure. Of course. It always, anything China. Really. And anything close to to China FUD, you know? Yeah. Even China FUD adjacent. Yeah. Huh. Japan FUD. I don't know. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. Pretty sure Japan is adjacent to China. Uh, I think so. I think so. It's got, it's gotta be, right? Yeah. I have to look you're, at the, map. you're the geography expert. You I'm pretty touting, sure it is. You were touting geography expertise <laughs> earlier in the show. I, I do pride myself on my geographical abilities. Uh, I'm like pretty terrible with that, actually. Are you? Yeah. I, That's one of one of the few classes I was, uh, you know, pretty pretty good in. But pretty sure last week even you didn't know where something was. I didn't know where El Salvador was, but now yeah. I know it is south of Guatemala. <laughs> good. See, I retain I retain that information. Fantastic, because I couldn't even remember the country. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there we go. All right, last news story here. Football star Tom Brady, Laser Eyes Tom, is taking an <laughs> equity stake in crypto exchange FTX. Does this excite you? I mean, if it was LeBron James, and I know Tom Brady is probably oh, like the LeBron on. James. It's just at football is just not my sport, so I don't get that excited. I mean, I'm excited yes, that, but F- it's it's more about it's FTX. Yeah. Well, one, it's FTX, and two, I mean. You know, if Tom Brady's out here pumping FTX, that's a pretty that's crazy. Big deal. Yeah, right. Like this arguably, like the the Tom goat. Brady's a top five athlete in the world right now, most popular ones, in right? history. Like, I mean, I don't know about history. I mean, in he's the world, he's got the most Super Bowls of all time. 
I get that, but that's the United and America's States. America's popular, most popular sport. No doubt. But once you get out of the United States, American football is not that is becomes less. Yeah, and less no, popular. that's that's true. That's true. I'm talking about like uh, like Messi is you know like a lot of soccer players are probably significantly more popular. You know, yeah. you know yeah. LeBron in China and and you know, it, I mean it's Stefan Marbury, Steph. Um, <laughs> do you know? So you know, you, are you familiar with the soccer player Messi? Yeah. Right? Uh, Lionel Messi. I don't know his fucking name, but yeah, I'm that's not a big correct. soccer guy. Look yeah, is you. that right? Yeah. So uh, his, I just read today, his contract. So the biggest contract in sports history has ended today. And it was a four-year, $625 million contract. Oh, my God. Could you, could uh, you imagine? So you're saying now he's poor. Is it, now that's he's it. The internet up. Poor. What is he going to do now? <laughs> I hope he bought some apes. Uh, <laughs> oh, could man. you imagine four years, six twenty-five? Are you kidding me? It might even be more than that. It's like it might have been six forty-five, but it's four years, six something. That's uh, wild. I mean, that's bananas. Yeah. So this story, though, Tom Brady and his wife are becoming shareholders. They're getting equity stake in FTX. And becoming uh, brand ambassadors. Interesting. That's cr- that, I mean, that's crazy. I thought it was pretty crazy when FTX, uh, you know, rent I don't know, leased whatever the stadium in Miami is. I don't know what they call it, but you know, for a certain sponsored. amount of time, it's they sponsored. sponsored. Is that what it's called? Yeah. So for a certain amount of time, a stadium's called something, and then either right, they, they buy you know, the keep, naming rights. Right. Like Staples Center's been Staples Center since like two thousand and one, I think. Um, but I mean, technically, I guess that could change over time. Um, like in in Toronto, it used to be like the Air Canada Center. Now it's like Scotia Bank Center. Uh, but the fact that FTX did the same thing for, I think, a pretty big market. Like Miami's a pretty big market. Yeah, they actually talk about this here. So they um, struck a hundred and thirty five million dollar deal with the Miami Heat. To rename this, uh, rename the stadium FTX Arena. Yeah, like that. That got me excited. They're actually they're spending two hundred and ten million dollars to rename a professional sport or professional e team e sports team from TSM to TSM FTX. Really? Holy cow! I get, How about I mean, that? That the e sports team cost more than than renaming a stadium. Yeah. How how That's wild is that? Crazy. That's crazy. I mean, I have I, I haven't even scratched the surface on esports stuff, and I mean, it's so much bigger than I even imagined. So, FTX owns Blockfolio, right? Uh, I believe so. So, well, what's also interesting here is Blockfolio is the one that signed Trevor Lawrence, who is the number one NFL draft pick. Uh, and, right. and he's doing the sponsorship with them. That's crazy. So they are all over, FTX all over the board, taking over the world. Uh, it also says that the Bradys are going to be taking their signing bonuses in cryptocurrency. I read that. Yeah, that's that's pretty interesting. I mean, it's huge. That's the biggest piece of news. Um, I mean, bes- I, I don't know what's bigger. Is Jay-Z switching his avatar on Twitter to a crypto punk bigger than... FTX and Tom Brady. I, Dang, it's that's it's, tough. It clo- it's close. It's close. But I think this is big. This is huge. Yeah, this is that's huge. why. That's why I asked if it excited you. you I mean, it excites me. It could be even more exciting had it taken a sport that I was, you know, had it been a basketball, you know, like like I said, like a LeBron James or uh, or. Did yeah, you know I, that Tom Brady is also launching an NFT platform? That doesn't shock me. Called Autograph. That's interesting. Yeah. Expected to bring together some of the biggest brands in sports, entertainment, fashion, and pop culture to create non-fungible tokens. Dude, this is like big stuff that's going on here. Yeah. So hopefully Maybe we someday see them. we'll actually be rich. Maybe. <laughs> like I feel we're on the cusp of it. <laughs> we're, we're at like the bleeding edge of all of this. Uh, you know, it's like... Can we just play our cards right enough? Like just, you know, can we like just we've not been, We've been successful it? together, I would say. Like we had our little Amazon venture yeah. last last year. And 
That was I would I would say that that was successful. There were some things that changed internally uh, that were out of our you know uh, out of our hands. Uh, but I I think that was a pretty successful venture. I feel we're gonna do some something good at some point, and we will be richer than we are currently. Yeah, I mean, look, I think that's, that's a fair statement. That's really the only thing you can ask for, right? Yeah, it's just don't go backwards. <laughs> don't. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's that's really that's all I need in life is just not to go backwards. Uh even if it's just the same, just don't go backwards. Anyway, that is going to do it for the news. What else we got today? What I was trying to get, I was trying to set you up for a sweet sweet segue. Uh, <laughs> oh, I it did not work. <laughs> no, I totally missed it. It was almost it was a little too subtle for me. It was for very my subtle brain today. You know like, what? We're not rolling on all on all uh, cylinders today. Yeah, so both we both you and I. We're we're uh, honestly, I know you're not gonna like this, but I feel like we're morning people. At least I definitely I know I am, but like usually we record this show in the morning. I agree. I think yeah. we are morning people. Mm-hmm. I mean, my voice isn't there, but my my activity level and my heightened awareness is definitely there. Uh, but so, all right, well, well, this is a great segue. Thanks for that. But, uh, speaking of segues, speaking of segues, <laughs> I, I can't even, I can't even actually segue into this now. Uh, we, we, we are working on another project together that, uh, I think is going to be pretty interesting. We've, we've tried to do something like this before. It did not, uh, take off as we thought it would. But I think we got a, a good team going for this project. And in the next couple of weeks, we're going to be launching what we're calling the Decentralized Generation Network or DGEN Network for short. And it's going to be DGEN.network. Follow us on Twitter. Um, it what is I think it's just at D, the letter yeah, D, the, Gen the letter, yeah, Network. Yeah. At D I'll, Gen Network, and uh, I'll, we'll, I'll put we'll a link it. in the yeah. I'll put a link in the show notes. We'll, so tell we'll people it what it's going to be about. So I mean, essentially, we want um, we're looking to create a central location where you can get news on crypto stuff, uh, NFT stuff, just kind of fun articles. Kind of taking some you know, there, there's been some great websites over the time that we've been in crypto, like kind of like a. You know, taking some stuff from like what whale reports used to do for those of you guys who were around back then. Um, for people that are, are more in the NFT space, having a central location to get information on, you know, upcoming drops, get content. So like our show is going to be there. So if you're interested in crypto, NFTs, uh, we'll have we'll have live streams. We'll have like live streams from the main condition, uh, at least to start with ideally some down the road, uh, but we'll have podcasts from obviously Wrecked. Um, our, our friend uh, Chris has his show called The Ape and Pony Show, which is a little bit more NFT based. Um, but yeah, it's, it's going to be, uh, I think a lot of, uh, ideally what we'll, for this show, um, what, we'll, what, what we'll hopefully do is transition from using the block crypto to using DJ Network <laughs> as our source of news. Um, so more, more so we want... I think I think the focus is going to be on, you know, articles, uh, news, yeah, but that, I think that it's sort of thing. Going to be kind of a little more uh, fun, irreverent. Mm-hmm. Like I wouldn't call it a news network. No, it's definitely not, not going news. To be that right? Like we're never going to be breaking any news over there. I don't think it's I'm going to not, be more not in the short opinion term. Opinion articles. It's going to be things of that nature. I think. Yeah, or op like, eds. Is that what yeah, they're called? Uh, right. Sure. I guess. Uh, I know. You know best. how tos. Uh, you know. So the other thing is, we're looking for contributors. So if you are a writer, want to take a shot at writing, anything like that for crypto or nfts hit us up we will drop the contributor form also in the show notes so you could fill Mm -hmm. that out and join the squad uh so we should be we're planning to launch i think what in in the next two weeks yeah july 16th is is the target date um so only yeah a couple weeks away um but it's 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 going pretty good uh so if you are interested in 
uh, and, and doing some writing, just like I said, hit us up. We'll get you, that'll get you into our uh, writer's discord. So you can hop in there. And we already have, do you know how many people we have in there already? A pretty good amount. I'm actually, like, I think we have like almost 20 people. I'm going to look right now. We've got. It's, yeah. So I was oh, pretty yeah. happy. And there's, there's, uh, there is, there's, there's, there's tw- uh, 20 of us. Wow. So, and, and five of them are what we'll call uh, kind of the, the, the founders, but the kind of the admin team. Um, so all of the, the, the other 15 are, are writers. Uh, so that's pretty impressive already. But, you know, this, we, we've been talking and I think, you know, some people may want to write one article uh, and that's totally cool. Uh, so if you have like one good idea and you want to want, write one article about that, fantastic. You can absolutely, you know, you can absolutely do that. So I think we'll see more of that with our writers is a little bit more sporadic. Some of them might be a bit more consistent, but at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is have consistent, uh, you know, consistent yeah, it's more content. About consistent content than the consistent writer. So exactly. if, you, if you get inspired to write an article once a fiscal quarter, totally fine. Um, absolutely. You know, so the, and it's on us to keep the content coming, right? So, uh, if you're interested, hit us up. If not, we hope you would give us a follow there. We're eventually merging the show over there, um, so the that's where you're going to be able to find the show at some point. So that that's it, DGen Network. I'm excited about it. I think the we've got a the website's coming along pretty good. So. The website's coming along. And that's always that's always exciting. This is kind of the I think it's like the fourth website we've kind of put together. I feel like each uh, one gets better than the last one. And yeah, exactly. They've been getting progressively better. So I'm, I, I've my hopes are high for this one. Um, but yeah, I think I think it's gonna be pretty good. I think it's gonna be pretty good. We've had some pretty pretty good feedback from our Telegram. Uh, some guys. I think we already have like five AMs already in our Discord as a writer. Uh, so shout out to him. Yeah, who He's, let that guy in? I don't know. Some I was me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, that's that's our boy. So the first, uh, he, uh, the first uh, Ray episode he writes, he's banned. <laughs> we had one right. We had one guy say he was a Celtics fan. And I'm like, well, we got to ban this guy immediately. Uh, <laughs> the hate, the hate in my heart was real. Um, but no, it's uh, it's it should be good. So if you have, like I said, any interest whatsoever, um, if you have a good idea for, like I said, for one funny article that you think might be good. Uh, hit us up. Uh, we'll be. We'll definitely be interested. Cool. So that is. That's what we're up to. Uh, other than, you know, our normal antics. We're always. We're always scheming in the background, aren't we? Yeah. We're you. Always... Uh, you wanted to. I. May, I guess make fun of me for some for a tweet you saw earlier from uh, our nice. our good friend of the show, Darren Ravel. Oh right. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> this is not so much scheming, more of, more of an addiction problem. Um, <laughs> but I, I don't have. Let's, I'm gonna pull it off here. Um, I sent you a, a tweet from Darren Ravel, uh, and it was listing. Do you have it in front of you there? No. Oh, let me pull it up. It was the top five, I believe, states um, for gambling in the United States. Oh, here, I have it here. So it was. Let me let me read it out to you here. So the top five states who bet the most on sports in May of 2021. That's what it was. Um, Illinois not counted in this, uh, not yet reported. But I was laughing all the way to, to sending this to you uh, because uh, so number five is Indiana uh, at 254 million. Uh, number four is Michigan at 257 million. Nevada, which I would have thought would have been number one by a landslide, is number three at 477 million. Uh, but then Pennsylvania, I think his numbers are messed up, but Pennsylvania comes in at number two, 447 million. My and former new, home. Yeah, your former home of Pennsylvania, number two. And number one is your current home of New Jersey at $814.3 million. I'm like, how is it possible that in the last two years, uh, you've spent uh, you've spent time in the number one and the number two state for gambling, at least May of 2021? I just thought that was, it, like how many, how, like what what would make New Jersey so high for gambling? Like I, it, it, it baffles me. Like double from what I'm seeing in the Well, Nevada. I think I think part of it is well, one, you have Atlantic City, so that's that's a big thing by itself, okay. right? Uh two, 
it's not really i mean it's legal in new york but it's not as i like, see accessible in new york so i think right. you get a lot of new york city people coming over to to do stuff like that i mean it's gonna probably be bigger in new york but um there's some sports books and things like that but not as it's not as prevalent uh yet so i think you get some of that but uh yeah so but now is everybody like like I go, I'll go to my local corner store occasionally, and I'll see somebody. Like we have Proline in Canada. I don't know if you guys have that in the is U.S. That like Kino? No, Proline is like sports betting. So oh, it's like okay. you go, you go to the corner store, and you can, you know, pull your lines on. No, you can't um, do that. But but oh, okay. there's there's so much like the mobile betting is what's making right, it so and I think that's taking big. over here too. Yeah. Um, so I'm not sure how much. But in the past, you know, you'd see people like is is everybody just get, like are like out of your buddies will say like how, what percentage are into gambling on sports specifically? Uh, like a hundred percent group, pretty pretty high. Really? Yeah, I would say between that and you know fantasy sports and stuff. So I like uh, like DraftKings and things like that. I mean, I would say pretty high. I would say not counting you in my in my if if you take you out of my group of friends, I'm saying my Canadian friends that I kind of talk to, I, I can only literally think of like one person that's as I would say at your level of of gambling, and I don't I don't even see your level as being that out of hand. You know well, what I mean? Uh, like, I, yeah, mine's toned down quite a bit lately. Right. So. <laughs> like, I, I, I just somebody that knows what they're doing when it comes to betting. Is right. where I would put you, right. and I can yeah. only think of one one friend that I have that's at that at that level. Uh, wow. Everybody else might go into an occasional you know fantasy draft here and there. You know what I mean? Um, like a like a masters pool or I don't know, but n- nothing like nothing crazy. Um, so I, I I just thought it was interesting. I just didn't know if like everybody in New Jersey was just like uh, you know. <laughs> Just betting everything. I bet you can't walk across the street in less than three seconds. You want to bet? <laughs> do you like bet? my New Jersey accent, by the way? That was. <laughs> Can you do it one more time? Because I need to really assess. It. I can't do it. Come on. I can't do it. It was just a. It was a flattened New York accent. Like it was just like a toned down New York accent. That's all it was. I think uh, uh, the New Jersey accent's probably worse <laughs> than the New York accent. Yeah. Yeah. So it's maybe a toned up New York accent. Yeah, like I think you go over the top with it. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I, think so. <laughs> um, I, won't, I won't do it again. Uh, do, I don't want to. Do you have uh, lastly before we get out of here? Do you have any recommendations? Um. So I've been thinking about this. I have only been watching New Girl uh, at night, just rewatching it. It's it's so, it's not. I wouldn't recommend it. I mean, if you're looking for something to have on in the background uh, while you're looking at your phone, uh, it's probably fine. It's good. It's fine. Um, but nothing really. Uh, we have some shows coming up that are going to be interesting to me next week. Um, but honestly, the only thing I think I've watched, uh, you haven't mentioned anything to me, so I'm assuming you haven't watched it. And I hate pushing it. Uh, I, I don't like pushing shows too, too much. But I, I have watched the... Um, the Bo Burnham Inside special probably fifteen to twenty you're gonna, times. You're gonna pump that one again. <laughs> I, I mean, it's like that's that's it. That's all I've been watching. I've been watching that. All right, mine on is, a loop. Mine's a uh, mine's a crypto. Oh yeah. Mine's a crypto audio experience. So experience. I, yes, we because it's not an ongoing thing. It's a it's a you know it's very serial like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The podcast serial. Uh, yep. I think I might have mentioned it one other time when we were talking about, we talked about it, but I just finished it because the last episode dropped. Uh, and it is the podcast Exit Scam. Uh, mm. It is from Aaron Lammer. And oh. he narrates the whole thing. And I think he wrote most of it, did all the research for it. And it is the step by step story of the Quadriga. The Quadriga CX uh, Gerald Cotton ordeal, and he goes way in depth. He's got you know eight episodes on it, and it's pretty awesome. Just the story is fascinating. I've actually listened to both that one and a Death in Cryptoland, which I which I know you liked. Um, mm-hmm. 
both very good but uh, it's weird that you have um competing podcasts you're they right they came, came like right at the same time right at I the mean, same time yeah it was probably like one of them found out the other one's coming out and was like all right <laughs> we better finish this up so right well, what, good what's for, crazy I mean, about both of them though is like they're clearly doing the research during covid so like where they would have probably taken a trip to India, they could not. And so they had to kind of make like do a with, Zoom call. <laughs> yeah, they kind of like had to make do with what they had, you know. Right. Like Aaron Lammer talks about how they were going to go to India and try to fake a death, but they couldn't. Like, <laughs> Interesting. So, yeah, but um, I so hope Aaron's podcast does better. That's what I hope. I like I like Aaron a lot. Uh, yeah, it was. Uh, that's why I'm recommending that one. It was I I enjoyed it a little more. Um, I think it was a little better, or a little more well put together. Death and Death and Crypto is pretty serious too. Like it's like you know. Well, so know. was this. This was pretty serious. This one felt like cereal. If you've ever listened. to Okay, I, I'm a big yeah. fan of cereal. Yeah. So this one felt it's Captain a lot Crunch like specifically. Yeah. Right. Right. right exactly. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah yeah. All right. Well, that's that's enough for you. <laughs> <laughs> We, th- I knew this one was going to be rough uh, because you said when I when we hopped on, you were not in a in a in a great mood. <laughs> not that you were too mad, but I'm like, ooh, if he's if he's uh, if he's cranky now, this is not going to be. Uh, <laughs> not- if he's cranky now, an hour of me ain't gonna help. Not helping anybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness that's funny I, I mean still we i think solid solid show I, i'd give it a a good b what do you think well if we think it's good we should start just... grading we should start grading our shows at the i think end. a b i think a b is fine i think that's that, that sounds right yeah i think you oh. know i think it's a b a b all right it well, wasn't I'll, the I'll... it wasn't the a plus of last week <laughs> Last week. Last week is like when you studied really hard for the test. <laughs> you walk into the test and you feel like you did so poorly that you failed, and then it comes back a week later and you you aced it. That's what last week was. <laughs> I was uh, after the feedback came. I went back and listened to the episode, and I was I was howling the whole time. I thought it was, <laughs> I thought it when I knew everybody else liked it, it gave me it gave me the uh, the, the authority to laugh at myself. So I thought that was pretty good after listening to it. We're gonna have so much content next week, buddy. I'm gonna <laughs> Here, here's the real record. teaser. I'll tell I'll... you the show about how my cat shit on my chest. <laughs> That's not true, is it? It is true. I can't oh, believe I no. left it out of this one, but we're oh, running out of goodness. time. Oh my goodness! All right, <laughs> that's what we call a teaser. That's it. That's how we end. That's how we land this bird. That's gonna do it for us. Until next time, don't get wrecked. And that is financial advice. Hey everybody! Thanks for listening. You can help support us by giving us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts and become a wrecked patron by signing up for a monthly tier on Patreon.com. That's Patreon.com forward slash wrecked podcast. Don't get wrecked.